Hi, and welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm Ashley Weehy. I'm the communications manager here at Concordia Lutheran High School, and we're excited to have our third webinar of the summer. So this will be the last webinar that we'll do before school starts, and it really is to just help you know what's going to be happening with this year. We've had a lot of changes over the last year, and we want to just let you know what's happening, especially when it comes to COVID and the safety of your children. So tonight we have with us Jacob Pennycamp, our new head of school. We have Patrick Fricking, our principal, and Tim Manigal, our athletic director. So I'm going to go over a few things just to help us get started and know what's coming up. So just how this operates tonight, we'll have each of our panelists talk about different aspects and different questions that you may be having. But if you have questions as we go along, we have a Q&A box and you can ask them in there, or if you wanna throw them in the chat, that's fine too. I'll be monitoring both boxes as we go throughout this and either responding with live answers or answers uh, through the chat. So just to keep an eye on both of those areas. And we also, cause we have a lot of events coming up, I wanna share this with you. So we have a lot of big dates coming up for our families with the start of school. So just wanna run through these so that you have them. These have been emailed out to you, but we'll make sure that we're sending more reminders for you about these kind of things coming up. So the deadline to order school uniforms, to have them in time for the start of school is coming up this week, it's July 30th. So please make sure that you get those orders in. Next week, is our big back to school open house. This is required for all families. It's from two to 6 p.m. August 4th and 5th. This is a time where you're coming in to get your books, your schedules, your locks, your school picture taken, just all those beginning of the year in-person things. So this is different than your enrollment contract that you did through on campus. So still make sure that you get that done. That's your payment plan, that's your financial aid. Make sure you're getting that all in, but this is where you come in to do the in-person things. So please put that on your calendar. You can come anytime between those two dates. It's the same event both days. And then new student orientation is on August 9th. That starts at 8 a.m. That's for all new students. We have a special program that's for our freshmen and then another program for our upperclassmen transfer students. So that is a uniform day. That is a regular school day, even though we have a special program for our new students. And again, it's only for new students. The first day of school will be on August 10th. It's coming up really quickly. It's a C day, which means that we're gonna have chapel and it starts at 8 a.m. We also that night have an all sport parent meeting. So this is for anyone looking to do sports. Please attend this meeting. You'll learn a lot about the policies that we have and just information getting your uh, student involved in sports this year. Next week on August 9th at 7 p.m., we are also gonna have another webinar. And this is really just to help you get to a start on what on campus, um, what kind of things that you need to do. We're gonna walk through on campus, how you look at grades. We're gonna look at how you put money on your lunch account. Just some of those um, things that are nice to have in person and this or kind of see uh, in person done through the computer. And then it'll kick off our back to school night, which is on August 12th, starts at 630 with a senior parent meeting at 545. And this is our real like first of the year parent teacher conferences. So we encourage everyone to come meet with your child's teachers, get to know, walk the school, really get to know what kind of classes your students are going to be taking this year. And I've gotten a lot of questions about yearbook deliveries. As with everything, we know that COVID has caused some delays with shipping and production. So we are really hoping to have our books in by mid-August, which means that we're hoping to have the yearbooks out to the students that are already graduated, that they can come and pick those up in the school office. And then we'll deliver the rest to students who are uh, still in the school. We'll deliver those to the classroom during the school day. So, as we go along, we'll be talking more about all these subjects, but if, again, if you have questions as we go along, please don't hesitate to ask those in the chat in the Q&A box. So right now I'm going to hand it over to Jacob Pennycamp, who will kick us off for the evening. All right. Thank you, Ashley. Well, hello and greetings to the Concordia family. I am excited and humbled to be able to serve my alma mater. I'm a graduate of 1992. 
And Keith Cordy played a really important role in shaping me in those formative years. And I am, I'm very grateful to the caring faculty and staff who invested in me and built relationships in me. And I'm excited to be able to give back. I'm also a current parent. Uh, so like many of you who graduated in a similar era of me, uh, I've got kids at Concordia and kids who graduated and King, kids who are yet to be there. So I have five children, three recent graduates of Concordia, uh, one current sophomore daughter and one future lady cadet. She's in middle school. She'll be there in just a couple years. So I look forward to parenting with you as well as I'll get to wear a number of hats being around the building. For the past 14 years, I've served as principal of Emmanuel St. Michael Lutheran School. That's one of our preschool through eighth grade Lutheran schools here in, the, in this wonderful region of Northeast Indiana. Uh, prior to that, I had four years of uh, administration experience as a building principal in Aurora, Illinois. And I taught then seven years before that. So I just finished my 25th year of Lutheran education, feeling my age a little bit, but uh, one of the things I look forward to sharing more about my, my belief in Lutheran education over a number of those events that I might get to meet you at in the upcoming weeks. But uh, one thing I want to share with you tonight is that I have learned and I have a strong belief that Lutheran education always works best when we work in partnership. And so I thank you as parents for being invested in your child and participating in this event, as well as the ones that will come up. You make a big difference. And I thank you for choosing Concordia as your partner in education. Um, I also thank uh, Ashley Weehy for hosting this. Um, as, as she has shared, and, and, and I'll encourage you too, if you have questions as we go, please use the chat feature. She will queue those up for us and we will try to pause at the end of each section and answer questions as we can. And uh, again, before I, I hand it over to our principal, Pat Fairking, to talk about um, our return to school plan and some of the uh, impacts of COVID yet, uh, let me just say again, I really look forward to meeting you in person uh, next week at our open house sessions on the 4th and 5th from 2 to 6, and then at those events that, uh, that Ashley pointed you to as we welcome our new students and our, uh, our general back to school night on the 12th of August. So Mr. Fairking, the floor is yours. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Happy uh, summer holidays as we uh, wrap things up here in the last few days. I hope and I pray that uh, summer holidays have been a blessing for you and for your families, uh, that people have had some energy renewed and restored uh, from the hard work that's been going on, not only the past school year, but the past 15, 16 months. Uh, around the school building, uh, some of the normal things that happen during the summer have been going on. So cleaning and floors, and you'll see a new thing here or there as we walk around the building during our open house sessions next week. So that'd be great to welcome everybody back in. Next week, teachers return and we start our pre-school and our orientation meetings. We have a new art teacher, Ms. Katie uh, Underwood, will be joining us as an art teacher. And um, please take a moment, stop by her classroom down on the first floor and say hi. What I'd like to do is just kind of walk through our back to school plans. It was shared in late June, early July. And just I'm just going to hit the highlights that go through that. And if you have questions, by all means, please ask. Uh, the, the big question to start off with, our masks and masks are uh, not required for students, teachers, or staff. Um, you are very welcome to wear a mask if you would. We know right now the CDC has some guidelines that have just come out recently that start putting in some designation for vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals requiring masks. We're keeping watch of that, but at this time, Concordia is still mask optional for individuals. Contact tracing and social distance. We will continue as best as we can to keep students uh, six, or sorry, to try to keep students three feet and further apart. The definitions for uh, contact tracing and when we have to go through those protocols are still the same as what they were in the spring. So three feet for a distance for a time of uh, 15 minutes or more. But as far as who gets tapped on the shoulder and has to exercise a quarantine following a close contact changes with vaccinations. So individuals that are fully vaccinated and they can confirm that they are fully vaccinated with us at school do not have to go through quarantine uh, situations or through quarantine protocols. For individuals who might be identified as a contact or through contact tracing as a close contact who are unable to confirm vaccination, then we exercise the 14 day, well, along with the options for a seven day and an 11 day uh, quarantine. And so those are the same protocols that we at the high school were following 
last spring. Again, we're keeping our eyes open and, and continue to be in conversation with our local health department regarding what's going on with some of the um, for, uh, variations and, and variants of different COVID strains that might be out there. Uh, we are watching carefully the, um, the current trend with this, and, and we pray and we hope that we are able to be as much as we possibly can in a normal situation. I think one of the things I really want to share with you is as much as we possibly can, we want people in the building. Uh, we see some tremendous results of that from this past school year. Recently, over the last couple of days, students and teachers that were part of AP classes have received their scores. Um, yeah, at Concordia, we will share this a little bit more formally, but just tremendous evidence for the favorable for those of us that were able to be in person as school and school communities throughout the United States using or demonstrated through such thing as the AP exam scores, those standardized tests. And hats off to our teachers and our students of last year's AP classes, you knocked it out of the park. We are so happy and we are so proud of you. Uh, jumping back to our back to school plan, as far as the vaccine itself, Concordia is not requiring that the COVID vaccine be administered to students or to teachers. Um, again, it's a family decision as far as what happens and how you choose to go through the vaccine if you choose to or if you don't choose to. The advantage for that is in those close contact identifications as we just explained a moment ago. Uh, remote learning uh, will take place if needed, if we have to shut things down, if we get a outbreak of this that gets to the point where it's better or safer for us to put the uh, community into a quarantine or into an isolation element for a little bit of time. Hopefully uh, we don't have to exercise any of those sort of plans or any of those sort of exercises this coming school year. As far as just some of the daily routines around the building, we're still gonna be cleaning and sanitizing the building uh, faithfully after classes uh, at the end of the school day as we had this past school year. And not only with COVID, but we just saw a dramatic decrease in the amount of cold and flu absences from students through the course of the school year with that as well. Our daily schedule, Concordia uses a modified eight period uh, block schedule. We break that into odds and even days. And so most of our class periods or most of our school days have four class periods. We are in it reintroducing E-days into our schedule this year. E-day is when all eight class periods meet for a shorter duration of time. And so on an E-day, we just follow this rate, one, two, three, four for lunch, five, six, seven, eight class period. Uh, we're gonna continue to exercise the protocol of one-way staircases. In the building, we found a lot of uh, positive movement and just helped keep uh, the flow within the building, especially around the stairwells, moving more favorably. So staircases will still be designated as either all up or all down as we go from one place to another. Another little subtle change for us is lunch. Last school year, students had lunch in a classroom based upon their fifth or their sixth period class, and lunch was delivered to them. We're gonna keep some of that, but we're gonna change some of that a little bit as well. During the lunch period, those people or those individuals that would like to have lunch, they go to the cafeteria to collect their own lunch. So we are not distributing lunches to classrooms. Students then go to a designated or assigned space that, um, that they'll learn about um, as we get ready to start the school year where they will then eat their lunch. Here's how it's gonna work. Seniors are gonna stay in the cafeteria. We wanna give seniors some opportunity just to create some social time, feel that the cafeteria is the best place for that to happen during the lunch period. Juniors will be assigned to classrooms on the third floor. Sophomores assigned to classrooms on the second floor and freshmen assigned to classrooms on the first floor. We're gonna just see how this works for us during the first month of the school year. We'll evaluate it and we'll hopefully by the uh, time Labor Day holiday rolls around in early September, be able to make the decision if this is something that we need to continue or is it something that we can put aside and then return to our uh, kind of normal lunch periods of students having a little bit more freedom around the school building with that as well. Uh, chaplain Koinonia, Ashley pointed out earlier, um, Chaplain Koinonia happened on CND days. We are going to do something a little bit different on the first day of school from the past years as far as the assembly time. So our first two days of Chaplain Koinonia are actually going to be on the Wednesday and Thursday of that first week of school. 
Last year, we had four different chapels, or we did chapel at 25% capacity. Again, during the first month of the school year up until Labor Day, we're going to exercise chapel with 50% of our student body. So on a C day, if 50% uh, of our koinonia groups will be at chapel, you know, the other 50% of the students would be in their koinonia group, and then those two groups just flip on the next day with that as well. Again, students will be assigned to an area where they will eat freshmen, sophomores, and juniors assigned to classrooms on the first, second, or third floor. Seniors will be allowed to go to the cafeteria and have their lunch in the cafeteria with that as well. As soon as we're able to and, and able to kind of open things up, then club meetings and activities and some of the other things that we like to have happen during the lunch period would be able to resume. Uh, student lockers. Students will be assigned lockers going back to the old-fashioned way at Concordia where lockers are given by grade level area. So seniors, you get your senior hallway this year along the second floor. Uh, let's see if I can get all this right. Freshmen are down on the first floor. Our juniors are up on the third floor. And then the sophomores are scattered at the end of the hallways on the first, second, and third floors. So some of the locker distribution and the lunchroom assignments, they kind of coincide a little bit, especially for the freshmen and for the uh, juniors in that area with that as well. Book bags, we're gonna ask students to keep book bags in their locker and go to and from your locker, to collect whatever books and other materials you might need through the course of the day as needed. So that kind of goes back to some of the old fashioned way as far as the way high school would work in the past. Last year, uh, just to decrease the amount of traffic around um, lockers, we allowed students to carry their book bags throughout the building. This year, book bags stay in the uh, locker that is assigned to them. Drinking fountains, just like last year, the drinking component of it is turned off, but the bottle refill station element is still open and still going on with that as well. So students, please bring a water bottle. You can fill that out, carry that water bottle with you through the course of the day as well. Let's see, Ashley, are there any questions that you would, that have popped up as I was kind of running through all of those different pieces? The only thing that I would reiterate is if you have any questions about this plan or any concerns, please contact us and we'd love to have that conversation with you. This is very much, we're getting um, guidance from the CDC, from the local health department, from the state on what we need to be doing as a school um, for the safety of students. So this is very much in conjunction with health officials on what we're putting out here. So just putting um, that information, but if you do have more questions or wanna learn more about this, please, please, please contact us. Mr. Ferking would love to talk to you about this. Yep. Well, Ashley, I think I've got, I went through the list. Again, if you have any questions, we'll answer those the best we can here. I think we're great. I am skimming through some things right now. Um, so uh, it looks like oh, we had a question about on campus. So some issues with logging in. On occasion, we do have some people who have issues logging in and it could just be like your password changed or sometimes BlackBot, like any software will just you know glitch out on their server and you can't get in right at this moment. So please keep trying again and again. And if you're still having problems, call us. I mean, I try like a half an hour later. I'm not saying try, try, try for days. Call us within a half an hour. Um, or email us. Don Schuler is a really um, been working well with everyone to get um, people into on campus. So if you're having problems, please call the high school and she'll be able to help you get you in. Ashley, is Dawn hosting a on campus uh, seminar? Is that in conjunction with the? Yes. With the yes. So that's going to be uh, next week on August 9th. So that'll be really a walkthrough. If you haven't gotten into on campus very much, you want to know how to check grades for your students, see their schedule, just kind of the ins and outs of things that you should know for on campus. This is definitely something that you should tune in for. And if you can't, we're going to record this, we're going to send it out. Same thing with tonight's webinar. Um, so you'll have that information. We'll make sure and post it on our YouTube channel and email it out to our parents. Thanks, Jake. But I think that's all the questions that we have. And, oh wait, hold on, sorry. I'm getting some more in. Okay. Um, 
Yes, I can probably answer this one. So um, there was a question about the book bag policy. So this has been an involving documents of some changes over the summer. So yes, some things have changed since we put it out since even we talked this afternoon. So yes, the book bag policy has changed that it is something that they will have to keep in their locker and we'll make sure and update that on our website so that you have that document that's correct because um, things just keep changing. So we'll let you know about any changes. Um, and um, yes, I think that is all the questions that we have for this moment, we're gonna keep an eye on it. And um, Jake, unless you had anything else to add or Pat, I think we're handing it over to Tim Manigal. All right, thanks, Ashley. Um, on behalf of the athletic department, we're excited about the 2021-22 season that has really begun in earnest. The first weeks of June uh, starts officially on Monday, August 2nd. And I tonight would like to make, uh, on behalf of the department, three separate announcements, all of them hopefully exciting. The first is that um, we are going to have, beginning in the fall with our first volleyball game, our athletic events at full capacity. I know this was a source of great frustration and understandably so last year that um, really just parents were able to attend athletic events. Now, um, we think we have the venues uh, that will be able to hold people. Certainly, Zollner Stadium, we can hold 5,000 people. That shouldn't be an issue. And um, we think our gym is um, COVID-friendly enough that we should be able to be at full capacity. I do think it's important to understand, though, that the situation is fluid. And I, certainly, you know that at this point, I would assume. We could hear something in the next few weeks. Uh, from people who have perhaps a bit more authority than we do, that that's not a good idea. And if and when that happens, then we need to be prepared as an institution to change the policy on attending athletic events. I don't necessarily foresee that happening, but I'm not a prophet either. So we hope that um, we can continue to keep <clears throat> all athletic events at full capacity. That is our intention going forward as we sit here tonight. Uh, the second item, which also should be excellent news, it certainly is from our perspective, is that all students at Concordia will receive free admission to all athletic events, all home athletic events at Concordia in the 21-22 season. This applies also to all fine arts events. Uh, I'm speaking specifically tonight about athletic events. And I'm going to talk here briefly about how students can access um, those tickets, but it is important to note that every student will have access to any home event, provided it's not um, a sectional tournament event. All students will have access to those home events for free. We're certainly hoping that the students will take advantage of it. There is really no greater home court or home field advantage than when Concordia students are there and are cheering loudly for their team. And it just does a lot for the school in general in terms of spirit and um, it, it's just a fun time. So we hope that all students are able to take advantage of that. Now in conjunction with announcement number two is the fact that we at Concordia are moving towards online ticketing for the 21-22 uh, athletic season. We are not going to offer tickets in, in, in the traditional way. We are moving to an online ticketing system called Ticket Spicket. That's Ticket, T-I-C-K-E-T, Spicket, S-P-I-C-K-E-T, Ticket Spicket, one word. It is an online ticketing agency that we used throughout the course of the spring successfully. In fact, it was much smoother than I ever anticipated. We are moving to this as our sole distributor of tickets for the 21-22 school year. There are going to be a multiple number of ways to get those tickets. This is going to be outlined for you in a blog post that I believe Ashley will come out probably tomorrow that I'm going to write on the Facebook page. Um, we're gonna publish this on Facebook, on our website. We're gonna get it out in a multitude of various ways. Long story short, everyone will need to purchase their tickets through that agency. 
If you want to purchase a pass, you will purchase your passes through that agency, whether it's a family pass, a student pass, uh, an adult pass, or a senior citizen pass. You will purchase, or a punch card pass. You will purchase those passes through Ticket Spicket as well. And we encourage you to do so. Purchasing a pass allows Concordia to keep all of the money generated in terms of revenue uh, from athletic events. If you buy at the gate, we have to split that money with the schools that we, that we play, particularly when it's an SAC conference game. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but we would certainly like to keep the money ourselves if possible. Um, so you, you purchase through Ticket Spicket. That will be, again, an online service. You will need to use either a debit card or a credit card to purchase those tickets. The best plan, again, A, is to buy a pass, or B, if you choose not to go that route, to buy your ticket via the pre-sale method. So the tickets will be on sale before the event. You buy the ticket pre-sale, you come to the gate, you've got it on your mobile device, on your phone, and you show it at the gate and you walk in. <clears throat> now we, none, we know that everyone won't do it that way. So we will have QR codes available at the gate. Uh, we're gonna try to set up little kiosk stations, much like you might see at the mall, where you can scan the QR code and you can get in that way. There is also a way, probably not ideal, but there is a way to print off the ticket and, and bring that to the game and we can scan it at the gate as well if, uh, if you'd prefer to do it that way. Personally, <clears throat> it's probably best to keep it on your phone. Um, that's sort of the way the world is moving and that's what we would uh, probably prefer here. I know that that's a culture change and a sea change for Concordia and I make a solemn vow to you here tonight that we are here to help you along the way. We will, we will take any phone calls or email questions you have. Perhaps there are some already. And again, my directions here to you tonight are pretty vague. You're going to get a blog post from me. You're going to get uh, two items from Ticket Spicket themselves that we're gonna attach to that blog post that will give you specific directions on how to access tickets and passes. It's really not difficult. <clears throat> I am technologically challenged. I was able to get to this webinar with one minute to spare because I couldn't even figure out Zoom. And yet, I, Ticket Spicket was not a problem for me. Now, I don't mean, mean to make you feel bad if you're going to struggle with it, but I'm here to say it's really not too bad and it's just slick and it's safer for us. We don't have six to $10,000 in cash sitting at a gate for football. It's just going directly to Concordia without us having to worry about that. It's COVID friendly. We can track people at the game. If a parent is concerned whether their kid is there, we can track them. Back to the, back to the kids, the free tickets. In order to get into the game for free, all students are going to have to claim a ticket on Ticket Spicket as well. Um, I do think it's important to note here, this will be in the blog post, that for students, when they claim a ticket or set up an account on Ticket Spicket, they should use their Concordia email address not a personal email address. That's the, the, the Concordia email address is the address we will send to Ticket Spicket. So the student, when they log into Ticket Spicket, they'll choose a ticket for the event, but it will be free. And so they'll just say, yep, I want one ticket. That's all they'll be able to buy. They'll get a ticket. They'll come to the gate, show their phone and get in for free. They do have to claim the ticket though. They can't just show up and say, I'm a student at Concordia. While we know many of them, there are some who we may not recognize on a, on a Friday night or a Monday night, and uh, we wanna make sure that everyone's got a ticket to come in. I'm confident there will be questions as the system works its way through, but I'm also confident that this is a, a real positive for Concordia Lutheran High School. I think that's it, Ashley. Thanks, Tim. You had one question that came in. Uh, they were wondering if there's any fees associated with the purchase of tickets through Ticket Spicket. There is. There is a uh, there's a 50 cent or so fee per ticket. This would be another good reason to get a pass because there would be no fees associated with the pass. And then once you buy that pass, it's going to act much like the, the free student tickets would. So you've got your pass. Now you go in and claim a ticket. It's going to be free for you because you have the pass. Even with the pass, you need to purchase, purchase, claim a ticket every night to come to the gate. So, so in terms of passes, we're not gonna have the traditional 
uh, green, yellow, or blue pass that we used to hand out that you would show at the gate. Passes are going to be a, an individual ticket on the phone, but that individual ticket would be free because you've already purchased the pass. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions about athletics. So we do have some other questions coming in, um, but I'll give it a minute if anybody else has any other questions about the athletic policy. As Tim said, we will be um, posting a blog post tomorrow, putting information on our website and on the athletic website so that you can learn more about how Ticket Spicket will be used. And for those who are attending uh, spring sports, this is the same system that we were using in the spring. So um, some people have already gotten to do this, which is great. And we're just implementing it for all of our sports now. Hey, Ashley, I saw a couple of questions popped in about lunches. Lunch is free for students. And um, they do not need to pre-order. Last year we were pre-ordering meals. This year there's no pre-ordering. We start the year, if you want lunch, go to the cafeteria. Uh, whatever is being offered available that day, pick it. There was another question as far as wearing a school uniforms during the open house for the photos. So students said, uh, we asked students to, uh, to attend our open house sessions coming up next week. Part of that is to pick up your locker and get your textbooks and things like that. But we also do your school uniform or your school yearbook picture. So Ashley, I'll let you jump in and talk about that piece. But uniforms are not required on the day. Right. One of the reasons that we do these school pictures during the summer is to give students the flexibility to wear what they want. Granted, we still want it to be school appropriate, but they can wear anything that they feel is nice for a photo. The only one thing that we say is that students can't wear hats. It's just doesn't help with the photo. So that's the only restriction that we put on there. Otherwise, a students can wear what they would want for their school picture. Just so you know, that is the picture that we put into your book. That's the picture that parents can buy and is also the one that goes on their student ID. So we'll be getting those out. Please, if you can come get your picture taken on August 4th or 5th. If you can't make that, we'll have a retake day um, probably in a September, I think is when we set it for, but we'll let you know about those days. And we did have one more question come in about the open houses next week. They're asking if you should bring your devices. Yes, please, especially if you're a new student, bring your device to the open house next week. Scott Storm, who is our tech director, will be on hand to help students set up their devices, get their emails, get their on-campus logins. So that's gonna be part of the stop, especially for new students. Nothing will have changed for returning students. So if you feel good, then uh, returning students don't need to bring their device to the open house. They will need to bring it for the first day of school, just like they would for um, bringing their books and anything else. But those new students, probably something good just to have Mr. Storm take a look at it and make sure that you're all set to start the year. And that is all the questions that we have at this moment. Um, I'll keep an eye out, but um, I think maybe we're turning it back over to Mr. Pennekamp. That's right. So let me just echo uh, a thank you to our athletic department and our finance department. Um, last year was a year in which we had to say no to students for a lot of different things. And, and uh, we lost a little bit of that, that school culture that makes a, a school like Concordia so special. So we're really excited to be able to welcome students back and uh, take away any barriers uh, to them being able to, to cheer each other on and, and uh, rebuild some of that school community that I think makes Concordia so special. So Tim Manigal, thank you for making that all work. Um, I wanna talk about one last item that happened over the summer. I think many of you are aware of, but I think it's important that we all are because we may know of people um, in which this might be a benefit. But uh, education, especially parochial education at a school like ours is expensive. There's just no way around it. And as a parent, I understand that uh, as well. It takes a commitment to attend Concordia Lutheran High School. Yet at Concordia, we're really committed to trying to make sure that uh, quality Christ-centered uh, education is uh, attainable and, and within reach. And it's the real reason that we are a participant in the Indian School Choice Program, which has gone through a remarkable um, and significant uh, change as of July 1. So, so the state legislature on July 1, um, the law went into effect that expanded household income limits, increased the amount of each choice scholarship, 
Um, and, uh, and while the pathways and the tracks are still required, there are definitely ways that we can help every student that fits within those household income limits potentially receive a really significant scholarship amount. So Ashley, let's uh, look at those, um, the numbers on the household limits. Um, the increase in the household uh, income limits means that a large majority of our students, we anticipate being able to um, uh, receive a choice scholarship uh, as long as they have an established pathway or track. Um, the table is available also on our website. So if this goes by too quickly, uh, you just need to go to admissions and scholarship and look on the right hand side for Indiana Choice Scholarship. If you believe that your family may qualify, I encourage you to reach out to our Director of Financial Aid, Debbie Shum. And on our last slide will be her contact information, but she's also reachable through our school website. Further, uh, the state legislature also increased the value of a choice scholarship pretty significantly. Um, and so these scholarships are still based upon the residents, um, the district of your residence, but the scholarship really could be now about 65% or up to 65% of the total tuition. And I wanna encourage all of our families that that does not mean that's the only scholarship that's available to you, depending on your family circumstance, uh, there may be additional uh, financial supports available to you. Um, again, this is just a, a means to say that we want every family that truly is willing to make a commitment to drive past perhaps their local public school and, and make the journey here to Concordia. Uh, we want them to know that we stand with you and we want it to be affordable for your family. So again, we'll go to that last slide again, Ashley, that you popped up with the contact information. If you believe that you may qualify or you know someone who does, or further, if you've qualified in the past and you've not yet contacted Debbie about the increase, because you will have to re-sign your paperwork um, to uh, qualify for these larger amounts, we encourage you to reach out to Debbie Shum uh, as soon as possible so we can get your financials in order. Uh, we have until uh, early September to get students registered. And then beyond that date, uh, we will not be able to, to qualify anybody for the first semester. So time is urgent for you to respond if you believe you might qualify. That's not intended to be a full uh, you know, training on school choice. Uh, we, we hope at Concordia to be able to provide a couple more opportunities for a more in-depth look at this, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware and you're asking questions if necessary. So we're keeping everything open for any kind of questions. So please, if you have anything or if I've missed your question, please drop it in the box again. Um, sometimes when I share my screen, I can't see all the windows that I need to. So please, um, if you have a question, um, please drop that in now and uh, we'll make sure to answer those. Um, is there anything else that any other panelists wanted to have? We will certainly stay um, stay on for uh, any questions that anyone would have. But um, Jake, is there anything else that you wanted to add? I'm grateful to be part of this team. Uh, we're blessed as parents to have wonderful faculty and staff. It's been a joy uh, to lead with the administrators and the administrative team, and I'm looking forward to the faculty joining us next week. It'll be an exciting couple weeks ramping up to the start of the school year. All right, we had one more question about devices for freshmen. Yes, please bring your, for freshmen especially, bring your device to the open house and to the first day of school, including new student orientation. So freshmen should treat that new student orientation day just like it's the first day of school. They'll get to see all their teachers, they'll get to walk through their classes, and we'll have some special things just to help them kind of get warmed up with coming to school. That's what that day is supposed to be about. Uh, Pat, is there anything else that you'd want to add there? Oops, there we go. Thank you. No, Ashley, thanks. No, the, bring the device. Let's make sure that you're hooked up. We, we want you connected with your email and through the variety of other pieces and software packages that we use at Concordia for that. So bring it and use it. 
uh, blessings on summer, everybody. Uh, just enjoy these last few days that we have. Uh, our sports teams have hard at work. The Margie Man's getting ready to go with their fall season. Just prayers and blessings for everybody for a fantastic school year ahead. All right, thank you everybody. We're gonna get ready to sign off then. I wanna thank you for your time to join in for us with us tonight. If you have any questions that you think about after watching this, please feel free to contact us. You can call the high school or if you wanna shoot an email to info at clhscadets.com, then we can get your questions answered as they come up. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for all of our panelists that we had tonight. It was very helpful and we're excited to see everybody in a couple weeks.